All right. Good evening, everybody. Definitely thank God for you all this evening. Thank God for you all this beautiful day in Christ, in the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus. And I look, I am looking forward to the Lord just continue to confirm some things because I know uh, when it's all said and done that his will is the only thing that matters. And so with that being said, I want to make sure that uh, we all are walking and, and operating and uh, abiding in the same spirit. And so the best thing I could do right now is go ahead on and take a moment and pray uh, in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. Most gracious Father in Jesus, mighty and wonderful name, God, I thank you, Lord God, for the grace, the grace, Lord God, to be able to uh, be uh just sharing with others, Lord God, the things that you have shared with me. Lord, only you know, Lord God, who needs to hear this. Only, Lord God, you know who needs to be exposed to this. Only, Lord, you know who uh, this needs to confirm uh, some things for. But it's in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. God, have your way in, in, in with me and all anybody that watches or listens to this. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. Oh, uh, with that being said, I want to share with you a, and some thoughts about living your life on purpose. Yeah, living your life on purpose. You know, when I was doing some research as I was meditating on this, I found a lot of stuff living out, living your life with purpose and uh, living your life, do you know, because of purpose or whatever the case is, but uh, it just this has really resonated with me, and 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 when I look over my life over the years, uh, this was the answer to a lot of questions I had on my heart and in my mind, uh, and that was and it, and it centered around my purpose. Um, and so when you talk about living your life on purpose, you talk about living your life according to your assignment, according to what God has particularly assigned you to do and accomplish with your life. Now that that's that that it, it becomes personal. Uh, it becomes intentional. Everything that you do, everywhere that you go, how you, you know, what you, you know, choose to, to sow your seeds into your money, your finances, you know, which I tell everybody finances are no more than a tool. And if you mishandle that tool or you abuse that tool, you can uh, not only you could damage that tool, but you could also damage, hurt yourself as well as others. So it's so important for us to understand how to handle our tools. Which finances are one of them, and and we're always reminded of of you know we're being we called you know we're blessed to be a blessing, you know, and yet we still struggle in that area with not being stingy, and we still struggle in that area not trying to control how much of a blessing we're going to be. I tell people all the time, man. I say, look, Jesus said, when somebody asks you, uh, uh, you know, something of you, you get, you go above and beyond. And I'm paraphrasing. You go above and beyond. You go the extra mile. You know, if they actually go one mile, you go two. You, you always do more. Why? Because that is the nature of God. Hmm, thank you, Holy Ghost, boy. You are speaking in this place. That is the nature of God to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. You show me where God is God of just enough, where he's just God of just enough. You know, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the God I serve that is now my father, that our relationship went from uh, uh, God being God to now God being father. I've never seen my father do just enough. I've always seen my father, uh, uh, where my eyes, you know, what my eyes couldn't see, my ears didn't hear, you know, stuff that didn't even enter my heart. I've seen God always like do things abundantly in my life. And so if I am his child, if I do carry his DNA, <laughs> you, you, you know, uh, this ain't it. it it should be no question. You really shouldn't even need a DNA test. The characteristics ought to be there. 
And if you are truly God's child, then it, those characteristics of love, of grace, of mercy, of giving should be there without question. Back to living your life on purpose. I'm going to share this scripture with you real quick. And this is uh, uh, 2 Timothy, the first chapter. And I remember when, I mean, these was this was years ago that God revealed this to me. But I, the grace wasn't there to share this like it is now. Because now it's not leaving my spirit. Now I'm telling everybody, live your life on purpose. Make sure you're living your life on purpose. Make sure you're living your life on purpose. Make sure you're living your life on purpose. And I'm going to try to do my best, Lord says the same, to uh, break that down. Because uh, it's a lack of understanding that kind of causes us to stay in these little ruts and cause some of us to not move forward. Maybe some of us to even move backwards. But let's see what the word of God says. Look what he says. And this is uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 9. For it is he who delivered and saved us and called us with a calling in itself holy and leading to holiness to a life of consecration a vocation of holiness i wasn't look the walk that i'm walking now i mean yeah i've been i've, I've been on this journey i've been walking this walk for a minute but the person i am today i wasn't that same person when i first started but as i have continued in my journey the lord has continued to, to wash and cleanse me and sanctify me with his word. So the word of God says, he did it not because, you know, called me, saved me and called me. He did it not because of any, anything of merit that we have done, but because of and to further Woo! to further his own purpose and grace, unmerited favor, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began eternal ages ago. It is that purpose and grace which he now has made known and has fully disclosed and made real to us through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, or uh, uh, Christ Jesus, who annulled death and made it of no effect and brought life and immortality, immunity from eternal death to light through the gospel. <laughs> he did it not because of anything of merit. That means there's nothing you and I have done to be who we are today. I am who I am by the grace of God, but what does that mean? And what, what is the relevance to that in relation to my life, to my purpose? He says he did it not because of anything of merit that we have done. This is this is that's why nobody should think of themselves more highly than they ought to because you know you didn't do anything, you didn't do anything to do to 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 be born a a a a, a, a male child. You didn't do anything to be born a female child. You didn't do anything to be born with the gifts and abilities that you have. You didn't do anything to be born tall. You didn't do anything to be born short. You didn't do anything to be born white. You didn't do anything to be born black. You had no, uh, uh, oh, give it to me, Lord. You had no uh, say so whatsoever. And what? The Lord chose to do through you and for you because of purpose. And so he says, but because of and to further his own purpose that God did this. And it was so intentional by God that you be equipped with the things you were equipped or are equipped with and the, the, the gifts and the calling to the glory of God to further his own purpose. 
to further his agenda, to fulfill his will. So to live my life on purpose, I have to understand what does the word purpose? I'm, this is the Marion Webster and this is the thesaurus. And it says, uh, mm, and I love this, 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 this thought. It says the action for which a person or thing is specially fitted or used or for which a thing exists. Living your life on purpose is to live your life like you have been called to something that nobody else has been called to but you to fulfill whatever that is according to God's divine plan. Damn. I told somebody earlier today, you're the, you're the only prototype of you. God made you and that was it. He didn't make any other. He wasn't trying to duplicate you. That's why it doesn't help for us to try to convince somebody else to be like us. Because that's not a part of God's plan. And every time we operate out of God's plan, every time we get away from God's purpose, where we're not living our lives on purpose, we wind up frustrating the grace of God. We wind up getting, we wind up being like a derailed train. We can't go anywhere. We can't do anything. And so it's so important for you and I to understand some things, man, that I have been called. My life is, look, my life is so unique and so special to God that I cannot take any relationship for granted. Because if I invite someone or if I allow someone to enter my space, my sacred space, It better be because God told me they're supposed to be there. And vice versa, if I enter anybody else's sacred space, it better be because God told me I'm supposed to be there. Because when we choose to do what we want to do without getting any confirmation from God, we wind up, amen, just bringing a disturbance in the spiritual atmosphere. And we wonder why all hell is breaking loose in the world. You got so many people doing things and are clueless as to why on earth they're doing them in the first place. Some of them, excuse, I'm doing it because this I've always done it. And just because you've always done it or you've always done it that way does not mean you. it was right. Lord have mercy. Doesn't mean it was right. Where's enough God in you to want to do it because it's right? I've never seen people getting mad at folk and people, amen, uh, 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 having issues with people and, and stuff like that. And you're like, okay, wow, really? And they're so strong about it, almost very defensive and want to fight, lead churches and all kinds, lead ministries and all this stuff. And you're like, but thou, either you were somewhere where you never were supposed to be or you were somewhere and did not understand your purpose. <laughs> Woo! Boy, I tell you, ain't nothing worse than to be somewhere. You believe that's where you're supposed to be, but are clueless as what you're supposed to be doing. And that's how some of us have been doing and living our lives. We've been literally living our lives clueless as to what on earth we are supposed to be doing. Now, the Bible gives us a lot of clear direction and understanding on, especially when it comes to relationships, what we're supposed to be doing. And we still choose not to, not to live our lives on purpose. 
not to live our lives according to the word of God. We still try to find excuses why it might be okay for me to do any and everything except what God says I'm supposed to be doing. Lord have mercy. Guys, we want to hear nice, awesome, oh my God, sounding, you know, things and oh yeah, I like that. Oh yeah, Pastor. We want to hear nice things and oh and sweet and lovely things. But there's so much in that word of God that uh, God is saying he doesn't want you and I to miss it. He don't want you and I to miss it. And the best thing you and I could do is to, is to strive and be determined to live our lives on purpose. Because nothing else matters. You look from Genesis to Revelation. Everybody that lived their life on purpose had more peace and they had more. They, it's not that they had any more grace than you and I. But there is no grace for you and I to live outside the purpose of God by the, by the very reason we were created. But yet, when we get away from that, we start looking for grace and we start struggling with finding grace to, uh, to have peace and to have joy and to, and to be happy and to this and that when you are out of sync with your purpose. There are people that, that went right out here and chose a spouse and then won't turn around and, and, and fall on their knees and thank God that they do and cry out to God and say, God, help me with this situation. When if I would have been living my life on purpose, I would have been praying and, and seeking confirmation from God in the first place to help me to know if this was in line with his will for my life. When you're living your life on purpose, you literally don't have to get, do you, you know, you know, it's not hard finding grace. Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. It's not hard finding grace when you're living your life on purpose. Matter of fact, grace is, is, is within your reach. I mean, you, I mean, look, matter of fact, um, mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. Psalms uh, 23, what he said, grace and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Why? Because I'm living my life on purpose. When you're living your life on purpose, whatever you need, God supplies it. Because you are in, you are in alignment with, with, with his will. And everything you need to fulfill his will will be freely given to you. You don't have to compromise. You don't have to lie. You don't have to lay down with this one or, or promise to lay down with that one. Whatever you need when you're living your life on purpose, God's grace is going to be sufficient. Man, you better... You, God's grace is going to be sufficient. I used to think, and, and I struggled. I don't know about you, but I've struggled. And I used to struggle with, uh, man, I used to get good jobs and still struggle. Uh, used to get, you know, not so good jobs, still struggle. You know, uh, had good credit struggle. Had not so good credit struggle. I mean, I just found myself struggling on every hand. And, and and constantly being tempted uh tempted uh to do things and take matters on my own in on my in my own hands and and you know and do some 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 ungodly like things you know uh until i started have un until i started seeing the grace to live my life according to god's purpose for my life Living my life now on purpose. That way, every promotion that I'm supposed to get because I'm living on purpose, I'm going to receive it. Every door that needs to be open is going to be open because I'm living on purpose. Every door that needs to be closed are going to be closed because I'm living 
my life on purpose. How could, how you know, when you look at Noah, you look at Abraham, and you look at Joseph, and you look at Jacob, and you look at David, and you look at uh, 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 Ruth, and you look at, you know, you look at all these people that God moved. I mean, he moved so powerfully in their lives that their lives became powerful testimonies because they were living their lives on purpose. See, when you're living your life on purpose, everybody can't be your friend. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. See, when you're living your life on purpose, nothing is personal. It's, 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 it's all about purpose. This is not personal. This is about purpose. But the world or, or, or somebody walking in their flesh is going to try to convince you to make it personal. But you got to keep bringing it back to purpose. And even with those that disagree, even with those that might look at me cross-eyed, even those that choose to mi mistreat me, I still, because of, I'm living my life on purpose, cannot subject myself to, to, to stooping down to their level. Ain't going tit for tat. Not when you're living your life on purpose. When you live your life on purpose, even if somebody says or, or embraces the the feelings of of of, of and, and and acting like they're your enemy, when you're living your life on purpose, he says you got to still love them. And love is an action. You can't you you you, you know. So there's gonna be times you're gonna be tempted to like. Try to love them from a distance until they come across your path. And then you will have to really be genuinely, genuinely serious about living life on purpose. Because if not, it's going to show. I've been there. I've been there, man, where I've had I've had some ill feelings towards somebody that had had, had lied to me, man. And or had just really, you know, unintentionally, unintentionally wronged me or did me wrong. And yet. There wasn't man or woman enough to, you know, to be to, to be honest about. It. And so that just really caused my flesh to just go in a tailspin. And when God allowed me to cross their path, allowed them to cross my path, all that animosity that was building up was non-existent. Because when you're living your life on purpose, you're not willing to do anything to jeopardize the grace. That you are enjoying. Yes, when you live in your life on purpose, and I mean, you are silent. You are silent. Nobody's saying you're perfect, but you're silent. You're committed. You're committed to growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You're going to be, you're going to be experiencing a grace that, that might make others envious. Why would you jeopardize that? Why would I jeopardize that? And yet many have. And they did not regret it until it was too late. King Saul, God chose, God chose. It. Does God make mistakes? No, he don't. But we do when we're not living our lives on purpose. King Saul, he had the, he had the, the grace and favor of God to do whatever he needed to do. He, I mean, God was giving him victories. God was giving him all kinds of success. And then he decided. To listen to people over listening to God. He did, God told him to do one thing, he did something different. When God went to rebuke him, he tried, he came with all kinds of excuses. God ain't got time for your excuses. Because all your excuses say is that you are immature and you don't understand living on purpose. You don't understand it. And so you don't understand, you know, when you go with all these excuses, you basically you're saying, I, I, I don't, I don't understand. Look, God, I, I don't understand this grace and favor I have, this calling I have. You didn't have to give it to me. And yet you did. And some people take that for granted and, 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 and go on. And act like it ain't nothing like King Saul until God stripped him. God stripped him 
of his kingdom. It shouldn't take God to strip us of anything that's rightfully ours because he gave it to us by not taking for granted the call to live your life on purpose. God, I want to live my life on purpose. God, I want to live my life well as well pleasing to you. I, I, I want to be able to discern the things I need to discern. I want to be able to feel the things I need to feel. I want to be able to be led by the Holy Spirit. I want to be able to be convicted by the Holy Spirit when I'm when I'm when I'm when I'm look like I'm I'm I'm, I'm you know not living my life on purpose. I want to be reminded of the truth. I want to be shown the truth. God, I want to live my life on purpose. I want to live my life intentionally seeking to please your face at every hand, at every turn. You know, it's a thought that purpose refers to the very reason why you get up in the morning. It's, it's that central motivation. The, the reason why you do what you do. I want to bank all, all that I have and all that I will ever be on the purpose that God has chosen for me. And so I'm going to live my life according to that because I believe if I do that the Father will continue to do everything that he has promised. In Jesus' name. I really believe that. Most gracious Father, in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for the call and the reminder to live our lives on purpose. And so, Lord God, I thank you that I don't have to look to this one. I don't have to look to that one. All I have to do is keep looking to you, the hills from which cometh thou help will come at my help because I know my help, my understanding, my wisdom, my life comes from you through Jesus Christ. And so, Lord God, I'm asking you to help me to continue to live my life on purpose. Help all of us to continue to live our lives or begin to live our lives on purpose where we are doing things intentionally. We are doing things because this is what the Holy Spirit led me to do. I might not can't explain it. I might not can't uh, uh, share it. But I know that I know that I know that this is you. And I'm going to stand on that no matter come, come hell or high water, no matter what happens, no matter what doesn't happen. Lord, I'm, I'm standing on, on that grace that he which has begun a good work in us will continue to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Continue to have your way, Master. Continue to, 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 to shower us with your love and your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we pray. Amen. And thank God.